How does Joey look? A Thank you. All right, let's get it. Uh, check, check, one, two. Why does my mic keep just rolling away? I, I knew it's haunted up here. <laughs> uh, that damn cricket is still here. The cricket's still here? Shit. Oh. All right, let's do this. Let's see, it's moving again. Look at this. Look, look. <laughs> you guys seen that? Did you see that? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's hotter than that. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, welcome to another very exciting episode of Off the Top with Rikishi Fatu. I am your co host, TMD, and it is going downtown Chinatown. Ladies and gentlemen, you can now officially call Rikishi. But before we get to that, we want to thank our main sponsor of the night. Mm. That's going to be Knox Pro Entertainment. That's right, Knox Pro Entertainment, located in Van Nuys, California, IA. You want to train with the best, learn from the best, look no further yeah, than yeah. KnoxPro.com. Big Quiche, how are you doing? Man, I'm here. We made it, Joey. Yes, sir. There's so much activities, so much room for activities. There's a lot going on right now. Dude, I am still, still exhausted from, from WrestleMania. WrestleMania. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I came home. I must have caught something uh, from WrestleCon because as soon as I got home, man, after Tuesday, I uh, went home and just, you know, felt some type of weight, man. So I, I've been bed rest. You know, for the last week or so, just taking fluids and you look good. I feel I feel better. You know, yeah, you look good. Got that uh, nice on, uh, uh, shirt on. Well, I just threw on. It was a nice, hot, sunny day here in mm -hmm. in uh, Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I just felt like throwing a little, you know, a lot of spirit out there, talofa, talofa spirit. All right, all right. And so well, there's yeah. gonna be plenty of talofa going on here today yeah. because Kishi, today is the official day. The fans of Off the Top Podcast get to call and interact with you. Ladies and gentlemen, it is going down. That's right. You want to interact with WWE Hall of Famer Rikishi, all you got to do is call Rikishi. That's right. Call in, and uh, you can speak live with WWE Hall of Famer, the OG of the bloodline. And you know what? Uh, you know, I, I posted this out, the link, out on all my social media. Okay. So, you know, we just wanted to kind of do something. You know, I wanted to kind of do something different for the fans. You know how many times we just kind of just read stuff what's out there? But I thought it would be cool for the fans to kind of, you know, hear their voices on the podcast. And the only warning that I do have for all of you that decide to call in is make sure you come correct. Because we do have, you know, you know, sometimes hopefully we have a lot of, you know, teenage kids mm -hmm. that listen to the podcast. So, you know, if you're going to come with your question, just, you know, be courteous of that. You no know potty I mean? because, mouth. Because if you don't, you're going to get bombed like this. Okay, so once you hear that bomb, that means you are cut off right then and there, and we are moving on to the next caller, okay? Yes, there sir. You want to get yeet. That's what you want to do. <laughs> All right? All right. So, uh, you know, there, before we get to those calls, uh, Big Keys, there's a lot going on in the world of wrestling. One of our personal favorites, yeah. Rhea Ripley, is injured. She has to relinquish her title due to the injury suffered at the hands of Liv Morgan. Uh, man, have you heard about that? Have you seen the news? I know what I hear it now. You know, you're, you're the guy that brings it all to me. It is. Uh, she had so, to relinquish her title. When did this happen? This happened uh, on Monday Night Raw. She was attacked, and the attack was uh, so severe that she she's not she's no longer able to compete. She for shoot has to relinquish the title. Well, you know, I'm sorry that happens, but you know, to a person like that, she's held the title so so long and really made that title like to me really mean 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 something during the times that you know charlotte is out the picture some of the other great talents that are out the picture and to be able to you know have a a, a good athlete like Rhea carry it you know she's she's done good by that belt you know and she's such a great great athlete and i'm sorry to hear that this has happened to her because she is one of my personal favorites. Same here. You know, shake what your mama gave you. Mm -hmm. you, you dig. Mm -hmm. And so, the, you know, to know that this is the news now, it's like, I, I guess, you know, I can only uh, say that, okay, big ups to the next opportunity mm -hmm. for whoever is in line, be it, you know, Liv Morgan or whoever the case may be. But, you know, it, it's time for, you know, uh, rehab now. You know, for for Rio, because now she's going to go through something like, you know, 
my shoulder was messed up at one time. And it was not sure if I was going to be able to come back during my career. When I tore my rotator cuff, uh, my whole labrum fell off, you know, during the matches, you know, in uh, on Monday Night Raw TV. Who was and that so, match against? Um, I believe it was Undertaker, right? So I'm at 450. Undertaker is, what, at the time, 320. And I had so much baby oil on that when he gave me the TD, DDT, you know, I went down his weights on with my weight. We're looking at 700 some, But my arm was too far out to try to break the fall rather than just leave it, you know, leave it flat, which I should have had it flat. And it just all that weight with my weight went on top and just ripped my whole rotator cuff, my labrum. So I was in uh, I was in uh, Birmingham, Alabama, you know, for damn near, you know, eight months. And the surgery, it took about seven people to carry me up on the, <laughs> up on the table to be able to have surgery uh, out there in Birmingham, Alabama. And when I woke up, Dr. Jim Andrews, mm. who does all, you know, the surgeries for a lot of the guys in WWE back in the day, and I believe still today, he woke up and it's just that look when you're looking at your doctor from a big surgery. It's like you want to hear the news and so forth and so the news was he looked at me and I looked at him and I said tell me and he told me you'll never break that shoulder again and so I know from experience that Rio is going to have a long long fighting recovery day you know first they need to go in there see what exactly has happened and then they're going to analyze okay this is the route we need to go and then my only uh, my only advice to her is to, you know, stay consistent with, with her therapy. You know, it's it's painful. You're going to see what well, the hardest thing for me was watching my teammates on TV every Mondays mm -hmm. and every Thursdays back in the day with SmackDown. Mm -hmm. And here I am sitting in bed, you know, recovering and just being juiced up with, you know, all this other stuff that they're giving you to try to recover. And out of the eight months that they told me I was going to be out, I bounced back in about three and a half months. Wow. So I was dedicated to really in my therapy and, you know, I couldn't stand the feeling of being, you know, the top of my career, you know, the Rikishi character, and here I am being laid out. So, you know, big ups to, to Rhea Ripley, you know, and, you know, to you and your family because when she hurts, her family hurts. It's the domino effect in the wrestling business. See, this is when it really gets real because now they're, they're not used to having her home a lot. But when you're home every day, she yes, she has a family, but at the same time, you know, you know, it gets it's kind of different because now you're trying to you're trying to know your family again, right? Because you're you're so used to being gone 200 days out the years, and I'm assuming because she was a champion that she was out there a lot. So meaning she was probably never home. She was a champion for 380 days. Man, that's that's huge, man. I mean, I don't even. That's that's a huge accomplishment. That's a hell of a run. But that that just goes to show you the person that she is, in front and behind the camera, her uh, her working ability, right, and how she does business and carrying herself. Right. She's not a she's not a liability. Right. For the WWE, so by all means, she needs she deserves all her flowers, and I can wish nothing but the best and. Fast recovery for you, Rhea. Yep. I hope you. Yep. Yeah, I hope you're doing well. Big shout out to Rhea Ripley. Shout out. From the shout off out. Top podcast. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna clap these two buns for you. Clap, clap. <laughs> Give me a yeet. I was envisioning you doing it, Rhea, uh, in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Big Keish. <laughs> that was weird. Uh, uh, man, uh, I gotta tell you what. We're gonna go to a really quick commercial. There's a lot to digest when we come back. We're gonna talk about. Uh, first of all, a very touching uh, video, speaking of family, with your son, um, Jay, and, and his son, and, and the yeah. experience at WrestleMania together. We're also going to talk about the whole CM Punk uh, video that was released. I want to get <laughs> your thoughts on that. So we got plenty more when we get back, and we got fans going to be calling in when we return with more Off the Top with Rikishi Fought 2. Yeah, I'll stay tuned. Rikishi Fought 2, Off the Top. We're coming right back. Um, 
Um, should we take callers after the first commercial or before the first commercial? I don't want to read. Uh, I don't want to read anything. I want, I want, we want to hear their voices. That's what right, call Rikishi is. And we are back with more Off the Top with Rikishi Fatu. Yay, Big yay. Rikish. So, yeah. um, Tony Khan, AEW, they released footage of the actual incident that happened backstage at uh, All In in uh, London. Yeah. Um, there was a shoot fight between CM Punk, or I wouldn't, I wouldn't even say shoot fight, but there was an altercation with uh, CM Punk and of all people, Jungle Boy, Jack Perry, coolest dude. Who? <laughs> a uh, exactly. Luke, Luke Perry's son, 90210? Yeah. yeah, okay. You don't you remember 90210? I I don't care. <laughs> da -da -da -da. Like what I'm saying, as soon as you name the the soon as you're talking about the names on here with CM Punk and a guy like Jungle Boy. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on, dude. So CM Punk has done so much. I, I think Somebody has sent me this video where uh, they, they had something going on in the back. And I guarantee you this. If it was a Samoan, mm -hmm. oh, Jungle Boy, you don't know shit about Jungle. Yeah. You, know, you, you understand, like, here's the disrespect level that I see in that. You know, CM Punk has paved the way in the circuit. He's been out there, what, for 15, however long it was, man. He's not the same age as that young cat. You know, so whatever the drama that that is... Like, when you come back and you're talking to, you know, sometimes you need to bite your tongue and give the older guys re that respect level because you can still learn something from CM Punk. You understand? And so when I seen that, and, I, you know, I was like, you know, boy, I wish this kid was trained here at Knox Pro. I mean, you, you know how we do. I mean, Kavika, mm -hmm. Gang Grill, or Reno, yeah. myself. Yeah we would have beat his ass into smarting up. Mm -hmm. You know, first of all, like, you got to have respect. Respect, respect for these that are paved the way because in reality, just by you, if he thought he was that over, mm -hmm. I guarantee you, just by him being in that footage where CM Punk whooped his ass, took him to another level. It probably gave him a little bit more credit, but the credit is, is, probably, is, is this, that he ain't got hands. You know, and so at the end of the day, all you kids that are out there, dude, like in the back locker room or even in AEW, man, you see OGs. They, they, you gonna learn a lot from these guys. They're not OGs just to be OGs in that locker room. Obviously, Tony Khan brought these guys there for a reason. And so if I'm a new talent or a young buck, young talent, I would be the guy to, and I'm not talking young buck, Right, the wrestlers. right, right, right. I'm talking young Buck as a young guy. Mm -hmm. Man, I, I'd be so I'd be like a sponge with that that type of locker room around me, you know. So, you know, I, I, shame on whoever posted that out. I was just gonna ask you about that. Whoever posted that out, if it came out, you know, because I, I didn't see it coming out of AEW's feed. It was posted right? from AEW, the company, the actual company put that footage out, All and, right. and people in the building started chanting for CM Punk, which was the opposite, I think, with what they got. But what are your thoughts on? Well, you, I, I think for if you're telling me this now, that it came out of AEW. Mm -hmm. First of all, whoever posted that video out need to be uh, number one, smartened up. Number two, they need to be fired. You know, I mean, they've already pulled the video off too. Oh, so they they pulled the video off, which is makes me yeah. look even worse. And and the horrible thing about this, Edge, who everybody loves and respects, that Monday, uh, because CM Punk had put out this video, uh, this interview where he was talking about the uh, altercation, and it got a lot of press. So they wanted to respond to that. That Monday, Edge went out in the middle of the ring, and I'm sure he probably. Uh, volunteered to do this. He, he went out there and spoke about how the positives of pro wrestling and AEW. He said, let's focus on the positives. And then he gets irate. And then Wednesday, this video gets posted out. Mm. It, it, it seems like it's chaos over there right now, AEW. But you're, you're, a, I mean, you wouldn't have uh, ever posted that if that was your company, right? It, are you kidding me? Like, I'm too damn smart for that. You would have kept it in house. You know, another thing for, for CM Punk, I would have never even shined a light on it. You know, because them showing the, the video, if it came and it came out of AEW's uh, feed, I just took CM Punk to another level. You know, why would you be so damn concerned to post up something from another guy who's in a different company rather than just worried about your company? If, if I was the AEW, I'd be worried about somebody put up a shot. I think it came out, I think it was one of the fans. 
in the Coliseum, they talked about this place, they sold only 1,500 tickets. Mm-hmm. But yet, they seen the Coliseum, and I'm not probably the only one that's seen this, but they showed the picture. You know, fans, they don't lie with their, their photos. They showed the, picture, the whole back of the, I mean, the front of the hard camera, the, uh, the seats, bleachers was empty. Right. And I'm, I'm looking at Brother Samoa Joe. You know, he's standing there in the ring, so I don't know if it was the beginning or the match, but my point is, like, don't worry about what WWE's doing, man. Don't worry about what the talent of WWE's doing. Do you. Do you. Because if, if you try to get, you know, go head up with WWE's talent or even head up with, you know, with WWE, man, you messing with the Cobra that's going to bite you in the neck. I'm telling you, can't nobody... Nobody, and I mean nobody, can touch WWE. WWE is so planted. It is years of 75-plus years. You cannot come and try to go against the king of all sports entertainment, the king from all entertainment, for that fact, for that matter. Right? We, we talk at WrestleMania. Yep. You tell me which one person in all of the world, the globe, that's not watching WrestleMania when WrestleMania comes. You tell me now when AEW has their whatever, you know, somewhat of a WrestleMania. Is the, is the world still? Nah, I think not. Right. That's because you guys, your product, you're too worried about what WWE is doing. Concentrate on the product. Concentrate on AEW. Here's my take if I was the guy to run the AEW. My personal feeling is, and this is why I was a fan of AEW, I was a fan not for the company, but I was a fan because to be able to see new faces that I know, that I've seen in the independent circuit, that are finally getting us a, a platform that they can showcase their skills, give a fair opportunity, and to be able to live out their professional wrestling dream. And for me, I thought that this is what's, this is what's going to draw this company is because we all watch WWE. The whole world does. So we pretty much know all the talent. But when you see a new talent on a different show and you say, damn, this guy here is good or this chick here is good, now, automatically, in your mind, you can't wait for, you know, you already putting that dream match in your head, like Randy Orton versus whatever the top star in AEW. But what's happening now, a lot of stars here, things don't work out. In WWE, they jump ship, right? So they jump ship, and I guarantee you when they jump ship, you know, that bag... They ain't going to just jump without the bag. And what does that do to a lot of independent kids that are out there? That just squashes all their TV time. That squashes all their budget that, you know, if I fail a kid, it deserve 150 grand. You know, but now we can't give them that 150 grand because we know that they're just happy to be on TV. But we got to get this other star from WWE. So we'll just take 50 grand from that kid and throw it this way. And so, the story, what I'm saying here, if Kishi was the boss, it'd be all independent kids, new breed. New breed. If you're coming from WWE and you want to come into the AEW, here's where your spot is going to be. You're going to teach all my kids here what it is about it. And this is what you're going to, you're not going to tell me what you want. This is what I'm going to pay you. Right. And at the end of the day, hey, it's just, you know, it's just building a new product. You got to build new product, new talent, because at the end of the day, you know, you're a wrestling fan. I get tired of seeing the same people. And these same people, Joey, they're getting broken down mentally, physically. Who knows? Probably people that are still out there working, they got to work. Even though they own WWE or AEW, they probably ain't even got a pot to piss in. So you can imagine, you know what I mean? So that's my take on the fight. You know, that's my take on Jungle Boy. Jungle Boy, you know, shame on you, man. You know, should respect uh, 
the OGs of the game who helped pave the way. Whether CM Punk trains you or not, he had a lot to do out there, and, you know, independent circuit. And, you know, he probably, if you made up and was on his good side, <laughs> Punk could have probably put in a word for you. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, how long you going to go with AEW? AEW, and then, okay, you got your little push with, with Godzilla or whatever the guy's name is. Right, then teamed up for a while, and then that switched up. The so. Jurassic Express, yeah, I, I remember that. Yeah, whatever yeah. that. Is. Yeah, <laughs> a, a, a Jurassic Park is that what it is? It's uh, close, close. Okay, I just say Jurassic Park and Jungle Boy Tarzan. All right, there it, it is. It was a movie all over again. So right. you know what? Shame we are, on you, boys. We are switching gears. Speaking of new yeah. breed, new faces, and new talent. Come on, there is some dissension in the bloodline. If you were tuning in, you saw Solo put the attack on Jimmy. Yeah. And then who comes from behind? None other than Tama Tonga. So now we are seeing what looks to be a split in the bloodline. Mm. So they, uh, there's and there's this talk of a of a, of a tribal t a chief. We we don't know. I mean, we, we well, know. Well, Solo's a paramount chief. There's a paramount chief and tribal chief. Right, and you know, good for uh, it's good to see Tamatonga come through. Like, uh, he's been out there, a big star in uh, Japan for a while with his brother and his brothers, right? And to be able to see him come through, and I, you know, I've seen it on the uh, online, the talks, you know, everybody talks about it, and his name dropped into the you know, one of the feeds with the bloodline. And I said, hmm. Again, I don't talk to none of these guys that are in there, mm. you know. And my boys kept me on, uh, you know, kept me on the on the down low, right? Because I don't ever like to know about anything until I see it, you know. And then it's my input after that. And so you're getting it here on the podcast here, right? And so number one, we just had the biggest show of them all. Bloodline was on top, main event, double nights. Okay, boom, great. Where does the bloodline go now? Now we go through, Roman takes his time off. Who needs to step through? Okay, we're going to pick the best guy who we who we feel, right? We put up uh, Solo. So now Solo's game, like, it has to really, really pick up. It really has to pick up now because we've seen how, you know, Roman Reigns led the, the, the bloodline, the tribal chief. We don't hear Solo talk too much, right? Nobody really does. But now the all of the skills that this boy has, I'm telling you guys right now, you better remain buckled up on your seat because what you just seen just recently on TV, welcome Tamatonga, welcome others, and wait for my lead. Wow. Listen, Big Keish, that is awesome. Uh, we're going to come back to that. But we, we got it. We, I know. I, I felt that. Holy moly. We got our first right. caller. Okay, Off the Top Podcast has got our first caller. and uh, Welcome to Call Keishi. Yes, that's right. Uh, let's see who's that again one more time. Uh, all right. Carly. Carly. We got Carly Hi. calling in. Hey, Carly, how you doing? This is TMD, and you're on Off the Top with Rikishi Fatu. Thank you for calling. Hi. What's oh, happening? This is amazing. <laughs> right on. I'm glad you... I, I love you so much, Keish. You are the man. Seriously. Thank you. Where are you calling from? Uh, state your city uh, and your state. Represent. Davenport, Iowa. Shout out to Davenport, Iowa. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, so what's your question, darling? I It's kind of a loaded question, so bear with me. Okay. Um, I basically just kind of wanted to hear your thoughts on you know jimmy and jay their um match at wrestlemania 40 and then what you think about what your other boy solo did and bringing in tama tonga and do you think that maybe we could see like one more run from you as it pertains to the bloodline because i would be mm. so down for that <laughs> we need one that. more run we need uh, one more run yeah, because yeah. of everything going on <laughs> uh, uh, that is a loaded question so let me yeah. go let me go ahead and answer the first one the first question was about what it what was my thoughts about the boys at wrestlemania 
Um, you know, I felt they went out there and did their best. You know, from a family standpoint, it was very emotional. Uh, you can see that, you know, the the boys brought their family backstage. Uh, I was back there, but was uh, not able to, I didn't want to go out. Uh, this was something that the fathers and sons, they, I wanted my sons to handle their business on their own. And, <clears throat> you know, uh, Jay, or WWE posted up uh, a little footage, a video footage of Jay with his son, uh, my grandson, uh, Jace out there, you know, just mm -hmm. uh, playing around before WrestleMania started. And, you know, it from a family standpoint, you know, it, all we can hope for is, number one, that you don't want your boys, you know, to get hurt out there. That they walk out there and they do what they were trained for all their lives. They were trained and envis visualized, you know, this main event dream match against each other. And mm -hmm. I was happy that they were able to deliver that. I I felt the missing piece for that match was myself. I I, I would have loved on a personal level uh, to be out there to be able to celebrate that dream match with my boys, maybe busting a move uh, together, just something uh, uh, for the fans to be able to see and uh, to be able to, you know, have our little moment as father and sons to congratulate them personally standing in the ring that you boys have uh, succeeded far more than enough. And thank you for, you know, representing the fans out there, delivering for the fans and myself. And so that's my take on the boys. Uh, uh, what happened to Jimmy and um, and uh, Jay uh, just recently, I, I I feel that there's still some somewhat of some type of drama going on uh, between the two. Uh, I, I feel that, you know, Anything with the bloodline together, I mean, the stories can, they're just all over the place. We got, we're, we're a typical real family in this business. Meaning, you tell me any family that don't have drama together. The only oh, Lord, difference, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the only difference with us is we got spotlights on us. And yeah. so, at the end of the day, you know, let's see where, you know, where this goes with, uh, you know, um, um, I don't know where Solo jumps in. Like this was a shock to me uh, to see the you know the Par Paramount chief. That's what Solo is. He's a real. He's a Paramount chief. There's the tri. There's a tribal chief. There's the Paramount chief, and then there's the there's the booty cheeks. That's me. <laughs> 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 so, so let's see where this this drama goes between you know uh, you know the Paramount chief and Solo and. And Jimmy, you know, uh, I can rest assured by the time Jimmy bounces back or Roman bounces back, there's going to be all hell to, you know, to break loose out there in this bloodline drama that's going on. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm sitting here. I see you guys, you know, hashtag call Kishi. Well, Kishi's waiting. I'm waiting. Like, seriously, we need to see you get involved with this because, I mean, that's, that's your kids out there, you know? And, you know, on a side note, I want to say Roman was, this run was one hell of a champion. He he did so many great things. Yes, and And he, uh, he, I oh, I don't know, goosebumps, man, goosebumps. Yeah, well, we want to thank you. I, on behalf of the Bloodline, you know, I want to thank you all out there that are, uh, huge, huge supporter, yes, huge supporter and... forever. Um, uh, quick side note: during during uh, Jimmy and Jay's match at WrestleMania, was Jimmy telling one of his kids to get off her phone? <laughs> I thought I caught that. I there's, there's I a video missed, there's a video missed. going around right now. He probably did. Of, of, he's looking yes. out to the side, <laughs> and he he's like, and he mouths, and, and it, this it looks like he's saying, "Get off your damn phone." During his match, yes sir, yes sir. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. That's During the match, my I can almost say my granddaughter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna throw her name out there, though, but okay, I must have missed that. You know, <laughs> she's always doing all those TikToks and stuff like that. I guess. Oh, uh, well, I also, okay. I just wanted to end by saying that, um, you know, I've, I've really enjoyed wrestling for a while. I'm Thank a, you. I'm a late bloomer into it myself. I got into it, uh, in 2015, uh, at the tail end, but I've been getting my mom into wrestling now as well. Awesome. And we're actually watching all the old stuff and we're currently in the year 2003. 
Right on. So we're watching literally everything from the beginning to today. <laughs> All right, girl. Well, thank you so much for calling in. But before yes. I go, I want you to give me a yeet. Yeet. All right, let's hit it with the Okay. Well, there you go here. Uh, we on to our our next caller. We got another caller. Thank you, Carly. Um, we have another caller. Uh, Ashley, you are on live off the top with Rikishi Fatu. How you doing? Hey, hello. You hear the cricket? <laughs> I can't swear. Just talk to the cricket again. I could have swore I just heard the uh, cricket. Ashley, where are you? Ashley, Ashley, okay. No Ashley, Ashley? Talking to the cricket. No Ashley? Okay. So I tell you what, Big yeah. Keys, that was a very heartwarming uh, video of your son with his son. Yeah. Um, and, of course, I'm talking about Jay. Um, he said something that was very touching, you know, and he was very emotional. He was very emotional. Um, this was that, that footage that WWE released. Um, he had said that, you know, he puts smiles on so many other people's faces that he hardly gets to see his own son. And, man, that really, really hit. I don't even have kids, but I can only imagine. That had to be rough with you. Right, Keish? Yeah, I mean, I, I can relate. Yes, sir. You, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, he's during these important times that, you know, the biggest match of the dream match that they, you know, that he wanted. So you got to go there. You got to go to a place that's going to mentally, you know, mentally calm you and your purpose and, whatever that case it may be, you know? <clears throat> and uh, he looked like he was having a a good time with, you know, my grandson, you know, Jace, uh, and my older grandson, uh, which is his boy, Josiah, was not there. And, but just to be able to see him, you know, tear up and, you know, like he needed his son by him. Right. To be able to, you know, to get through what he's about and ready to go through. And then you can imagine how the kids feel. You know, that's their favorite uncle is, you know, Jimmy. You know what I mean? And, yeah, they know it's sports entertainment. But the fact is, is that somebody can get hurt out there. And they're not going to pull any punches. They're not going to they're gonna go out. This is WrestleMania, baby. And so, you know, it's okay. Uh, yeah, I tell my boys and my, even myself, people that are close, it's okay to cry. It really is. It's okay to cry to, you know, just because sometimes crying can be healing for a person. And you can tell as soon as he dropped his tears, he said what he said, it went back to being yeet. And so, you know, big shout out to, to my my son Jay, you know, big shout out to, you know, my grandson Jace for being there for his father. And, uh, we, you know, we look we, we look forward for more of that you know, uh, out there, you know what I mean? And for WWE, it's nice that they're able to show <laughs> those behind the scene footage is because it really lets the fans know that, man, these rest were, they're human beings, man. You know what I mean? We, we got hearts too. We, we ache, we pain, you know, we got feelings and so forth, you know, just cause you see this strong character out there every week does not mean that that person is probably not you know, going through stuff in the back and, you know, personal or business, whatever the case it may be. So at the end of the day, I'm saying this, it's okay to cry. Yes, sir. And I know family is everything to you. <laughs> family is everything to you. And one of the things I, I've always liked about you, when you were coming to the ring, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but when you yeah. used to touch your nose, oh. wasn't that a signal to your kids, to let yeah. your kids know you were thinking about them? Every day I come out, that was a signal that I love you. You know, I couldn't say it on there because I didn't know sometimes the cameraman's not zooming on me like I and Sheik would say, right? Mm -hmm. And so it, it would it would be that gesture like that, yeah. you know, just to kind of just rub my nose in. All right. Just little things that, you know, Man. I think it's good for other wrestlers to know. Like, You know, it's your way of just telling your family. I'm thinking about you. you. Yeah, I'm thinking this is why I'm out here. And you know what? We're thinking about our next caller. Ladies oh, well, and okay. gentlemen, up next to bat, we got Wayne. Wayne, you are live on Off the Top with Rikishi Fatu. What is your question? He dipped. He, dipped. he ghosted us. He ghosted us. You know what? Hey, uh, uh people. <laughs> hey, listen. It's hey, okay. He probably went to take a sh
You know what? Even yeah. even monkey right. even monkeys fall out of trees once in a while. You know what I mean? Uh, but check this you, out. You just blew your opportunity. You know what? Don't be shy, yeah. folks out uh, there. We got a lot of great fans, by the way, uh, who tune in and and and, and subscribe, leave comments. Um, if you guys want to uh, call in, please. We want those questions. We need those questions. Please, don't be shy. Step up to the plate. Um, another thing I wanted to talk to you about, Big Keish. Uh, actually, uh, uh, a side note with what Carly was saying, how she wants to see you do one more run in the WWE, which is interesting yeah. because I see the bloodline separating in two. Yeah. One bloodline's already got one wise man. Yeah. That's Paul Heyman. The other bloodline mm. will need a wise man. Yeah. Big Keish, you are that wise man. Who no <laughs> other, nobody <laughs> better for that spot. Why do you guys keep trying to drag me back in there? Big Keish, why, why is it? Are you going to speak for the fans? Do you remember the conversation we were having? Uh, we, we were having the old fashions in Burbank. Yeah. Uh, and I said, you know old what? Fashions. Your spot is just calling shots, not having to lift a single hand. Yeah. You are that wise man. Big Keish, if they approached you with that spot, would you be interested? It'd have to make sense, you know, and, and you know, f for the fans. It's got to be that that moment for the fans to make sense for for me to be able to come back. And I, I would have to, you know, yeah, I ain't been in the ring in 25 years, right? So even though I'll probably, you know, maybe put in a position just to be Kind of like a wise man for mm -hmm. for the opposite side. Mm. Yeah, well, I still would like to. I, I got to be in tip top shape in my mind, you know, because for the bloodline, this is how we think. At any given time, I could be jumping in that ring, and when I do jump in that ring, I got to be one hundred percent. Yes, sir. I got to be fully ready to pick up where I left off. Mm -hmm. I damn sure don't want to come in. And then, oh, he's moving kind of slower. Oh, he blah, blah, blah. You know, I want to make sure, like, when the thong is on, <laughs> the thong is on. You, you dig what I'm saying? And so I want to I wanna be <laughs> fully, fully uh, prepared, which that will take no time. But at the end of the day, it's got to make sense. Yes, sir. It has to make sense. But, you know, I got so much confidence mm -hmm. on the boys that are there now with Romans, the Uso, Solo, Tom and them. They're going to figure it out. You know, the wise man, they'll, they'll be able to figure it out because, you know, we, there's a lot of us still that are waiting in line. Yes, sir. It, you know, yep. we big shout out. We just heard the news about, you know, Jacob Fatu. Yes, sir. You know, the, yes, sir. finally. Yes. Finally. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and this is, you know, I got to say this. And this is to AEW. And this is to WWE about Jacob Fatu, the Samoan werewolf. A few months ago, we had this podcast, and I was giving every single hint out there about this kid here. Born bred, come out from the bloodline. But this kid here is what I was saying. Whoever signs this kid here, you have got you something special in your hands only only if you know how to book this kid the right way like you need to put him with the right people book him the right way to get the best when I say the best the best out of Jacob Fatu and so you know big ups to WWE Hey, you guys went deep in your pocketbooks. Good for you. Good for Jacob. Good for his family, his kids. Everybody's happy. Now the ball falls into Jacob's court. Jacob Fatu now has to do Jacob Fatu and do the work. Yes, sir. Now to AEW, Tony Khan. Boy, y'all f***ed up. <laughs> Drop another bomb on that. And when I say that, boy... How did you guys yeah, right. pass up on this talent like Jacob Fatu? You already seen Tony Khan, the hottest thing in WWE for the last three years bloodline. is the bloodline. Numbers don't lie. Mm -mm. What is it? Back to back WrestleMania, we broke history. And then just recently, the biggest WrestleMania box office ever. Who's on top? Who's in both main events? Yep. Bloodline. Yep. 
So what I'm saying is, if AEW, what well, they did drop the ball on Jacob, but man, y'all could have just, if you was going to try to replica something, mm -hmm. replica something that makes money. Yep. You know what I mean? There was plenty of other guys outside. That's, I mean, Bloodline, we got a huge family. Yep. And you could have just, you know, formed your own. But whatever the reason is, the bottom line, y'all f***ed up. Yes, sir. Hashtag I drop bombs. Drop a bomb. Like the Gap Band. Yeah, it is. All right, we got another caller. Well, we're talking. All right, so here hey, we go. Jordan, you are live with Big Keish on Off the Top. How you doing, brother? Fine. How about you? Doing great. What's your question? Oh, I just want to uh, 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 know if uh, Wakishi is ever going to plan on coming back to WWE with uh, his the Usos getting his sons uh, starting out with the bloodline. Okay, let me ask you this question. Do you want me to come back? I would love for you to come back. Okay, and what's your reason? Why? I think you would. it would be awesome for you to be involved in this story with your sons. Okay. And do some, maybe, like, some kind of swerve or something, you know, like... A what? A, a swerve? Or something like that, like... Uh, uh, did you... Oh, okay. All right. He's booking right now. He's booking hey, he matches. Like yeah, he yeah, said yeah. to jump in with some type like of swerve. swerve. Okay, my man, where, where, where are you from? Shout out to your city and state. Uh, I, I'm from Jefferson City, Missouri. Okay. All right, my man. Let me go ahead and ask you a question, but I want to thank you for joining in. Okay? Make sure you always call Rikishi every time we come on the show, okay? Okay, He's, sounds uh, good. Again, Joey. <laughs> uh, everybody, everybody the people wants want to. you back, Keish. Well, I mean, they got to do some type of, uh, I don't know, maybe picket line or something or have everybody go in front of WWE with signs. You know, bring back Kishi. I don't know. There it is. Hashtag bring back <laughs> Kishi. <laughs> because everybody, everybody, everybody wants to see you back, Big Kish. And I, I, me, uh, call me kooky, call me wacky. Yeah. But I want to see you as the wise man in the wise man role to go against your former uh, ma manager, Paul Heyman, because he's the wise man of all yeah. wise men. But you, man, Big Kish, who, who none better to run the other camp? And we, we know hopefully Jacob Fought 2 will man. slide in there somewhere. There's a lot going on. We got Zilla Fatu in the in the wings. But before uh, we talk about the the rest of the, tonight's episode, we're gonna go to one more commercial break. Okay. And maybe we'll have some more calls. You never know. Hey. We'll be right back with more off the top with Rikishi Fatu. Yeet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You've always wanted to do that. <laughs> that was hilarious. Why you ended the, the episode on that? That was legit. That was. I, 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 <laughs> Kishi Fatu, off the top. We're coming right back. We are back like scoliosis, ladies and gentlemen. Scoliosis. That's okay. right. More off the top with Rikishi <laughs> Fatu. We're going to wrap things up with, uh, you know, Big Kish. Um, a lot of people are talking about the Triple H era. And yeah. I got to admit, as a fan, just by watching what I've seen in the last few weeks, I feel like we are in a whole new era. Uh, you can, f just by watching what we're seeing, the shots are different. What is your take uh, on the McMahon era versus the the, the Triple H era? Well, I, I, well, number one, if if you're trying to get me to say something that, that you know, would never, ever uh, come out of my mouth as far as, you know, feelings with uh, McMahon's, would only be 100% respect for this guy here. And I speak because of my family, that this boss here has took something that was like a circus back in the day, you know, when he got it from his, his, his father and, and took a chance to be able to, you know, do WrestleMania 1, who now years, 40 years later, we can all sit here together and enjoy the greatest show on Earth. On Earth. If there's another Earth anywhere else, that Earth too. <laughs> right? And so, you know, you know, the McMahons, they, they, you know, I can't say nothing bad about them. You know, the, the stuff that, you know, that, that are out there, I don't, 
I'm not a part of all that. Right. But what I can say was birds in the nest, in the Fatu and on Hawaii's nest, has been given a huge opportunity to be able, years later, you look at it now. Bloodlines on top. Everything's bloodline. I couldn't tell you how proud I was to look around that stadium when I see nothing but Yeet shirts, see nothing but, you know, Roman Reigns shirt, you know, no Yeet shirts. I mean, you know, it, it, it's, it's, we got to think about before you judge or anybody judge the, uh, the McMahon's family, mm -hmm. think about it. So my thing is time change. Hey, you know, all, all Triple H has done now, the way by looking, he's adapt towards the new generation. The format is the format. It will never change. The seed's already planted worldwide. When you come for WrestleMania, or SummerSlam, Royal Rumble, all his game, has he knows the format, but it has to be for the better of the company. Yes, sir. And for the better of the company, it's going to take, like, athletes. It's going to take finding the right talent that can, you know, that can carry that ball. Right. And in this business, you understand that. Right. In this business of in the performance center and NXT, what is there like 300 people out there? Right. And out of that 300 people, you are waiting to hopefully find the next big thing to be able to run with this ball. And so mind wise, Triple H, you know, Paul Levesque is doing a hell of a job. He's got fresh minds around him, a guy like the wise man, fresh minds. You know, when I walk through the gorilla position going out the Hall of Fame, I only seen a few people that I knew. You know, it was Triple H, Paul Levesque, Stephanie McMahon. You know, I seen Bruce Pitcher sitting there where Vince McMahon's used to sit. And then there's these new, uh, you know, new cats that are sitting there. And so I love the point uh, the uh, I love the point that, you know, Triple H is working with younger talent now, you know, behind the scenes as well. Because we got to listen to a lot of the kids. That's one thing we got to do. Like, a lot of, like, you know, back in the day, Vince was stuck with his old ways. Like, you couldn't fight him, you know, about your gimmick or, like, because he had tunnel vision of what he wanted to do with this character and what he sees as character, he was that. And so as you, you know, through the years, you know, things change, attitudes change, eras change. And to be able to have, uh, I couldn't think of a better guy to, you know, to pass the torch to, uh, which would be Paul Levesque and uh, Stephanie McMahon. So, yeah, you know, uh, the, the kids nowadays, a lot of you kids that are out there, y'all need to take advantage of this, this new era. Take advantage of this new era because it ain't going to last. The wheel's going to turn. So while you're training, wherever school, academy you are training at, if you are not at the performance center, do you need to be putting in work. Even if it's you, only you and your buddy in the ring without nobody there, like nobody's training, maybe on a day off, because you can see what's happening with the wrestling business today. Like, you guys have a lot more opportunity to be able to, you know, possibly be that. And the beautiful thing is, like, when you train from a school like ours at Knox Pro mm -hmm. or Gang Grills out in Florida or my Uncle Alphas or, you know, uh, family members all over our country, right, this country, you know, guys are like, you know, uh, back in the day, like, uh, I would say Terry Funk, right, or uh, Harley Race, right? you know, these type of guys, right? They're not here anymore, but I'm just using them as example. They know A to Z. And so you would need to go to people like this to really hone in and soak in your skills, knowledge of how this business works because it ain't PlayStation Wrestling. It definitely ain't no PlayStation Wrestling. We hurt, right? PlayStation, they'll get back up and your character will move around, but not in the wrestling world. And so... At the end of the day, the question, I mean, the answer is this. Paul Levesque is doing a great job for WWE. And, uh, you know, I can only, you know, pray for his health. 
you know, he had a little bit of health issues there for a while. And, you know, sometimes you got to make that decision to walk walk away from something that you love. But he'll step in when he needs to step in. And so for the time being, all of you guys that are out there that are signed by WWE, don't don't hesitate don't hesitate for uh, to reach for that brass ring. And that's my answer. And there it is. Very wise words from a wise man. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Bloodlines, next wise man. Hey. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Big Keish, we'll see. I want to thank you for your time. I know you're all tired. Up. We all got all much more to do. I know you're working on that album, which we cannot wait to drop. Yeah. Yes. You know, I want to thank, thank you to... Uh, all the fans. I was telling this story before we went on the air. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, big shout out to my host Frankie uh, for helping me put this together. My host Michael, and uh, y- you know, the first the first track, Dynasty Forever. Mm-hmm. So you know that put on. I said, okay, mentally I was like, okay, if people on it, then blah blah blah. But you know, we put it out and got so much good feedback. You know, I, and like I said, I'm a big fan of Wu-Tang and Method Man. And, and I got a text from Method Man. And I'm like a kid in the candy store now. Mm-hmm. Goes, no way. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, so, you know, you know, he gave me his blessings and so forth. And then, you know, we put out the bad man. Still a bad man. With the DOC sample. With the DOC and sample. And they contacted you, too, and, and, and co-signed it. That's two he for hit, two, Big Keith. He hit me up on the DMs. And, man, I was, again, you know, these are all... You know, legends that mm-hmm. I used to listen to their, you know, cassette, you know, back in the day with Yoko and, and you know, and the Lincolns and so forth. And to be able to put out something, you know, um, like that, these two hits, I mean, these two tracks, you know, I, I want to thank the fans for, uh, you know, I see their, their posts, man. Like, you know, they validate, you know, uh, you know what, what I'm trying to put out there, you know. And I, I just want to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm appreciating of, uh, you know, the love, uh, the support, the the comments. You're not going to hurt my feelings if right. I just want you to tell me the truth. Right. If you feel it's banging, go ahead, put up, you know, put up the put up the fire and all that. You know, but if you feel I was the by all means, tell me I'm the because that's only going to make me better. Mm-hmm. You know, so, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it like this. You know, I got I got a few more that's, uh, that's already in the can. You know, so, you know, uh, I drop these type of beats when, I'm having my conversations with Frank. Right. And for me, it's like I want to put out uh, songs that beat samples that that I used to love, that it meant something to me. Right. And, you know, uh, and then, you know, spit on top of that, right? And th- I want to take it back to where, you know, I feel like, and this is just me. Yeah, I'm not knocking any other rapper out. I just feel like the poetry of the of rap is gone because I know that's why I listened to it because there was a message behind that everything was a different you know a, a different group I'll, I'll listen to it and I fell in love with those type of rappers like Scarface mm-hmm. Ice Cube uh, you know Tupac Biggie all these uh, D.O.C. you know Dr. Dre and all these cats here because you can tell the difference from rap back in the day it was a message, and it still made you groove. It still made you, your feet move. But then you can also tell today. Today's rap to me, and, you know, uh, my, my 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 grandkids and kids, the young ones that are in school, and now and then I catch them, right, because I'll listen to what they're, you know, listening to, and I'll say, what the hell is that? So they'll, they'll give me, and it's just so much, like, you know, degrading women, just so, so much... A negative for you know us as minorities, right? That you know we're talking about you know our girls, our bitches, our hoes, and blah blah blah. And, you know, come over here and all that stuff. You know, profanity where it's just and it just for me it sends out a wrong message. And so I wanted to use my platform. You know, you guys that are listening out there on the radio world, and uh, those that are have been listening to these two tracks. You know, my point is with this track, is um, with this album, is number one, it's never too late for you to do something that's on your to-do list. It's been a long time since I wanted to drop an album. 
Two is you can always do uh, something if you put your mind to it. But understand it. Number three is that platform. Understand that everybody's listening and everybody's watching. Yep. So at the end of the day, my character, I'm that badass dude that'll whoop your ass. But I'm also that loving, you know, big hearted type of dude. Yes, sir. And I just want to just put out some fun music with a message on there, but something to move your body, you know, something mm -hmm. to make you just turn around and just, you know, slap yourself. And shake your tail feather. And shake, there, there it is. Mm -hmm. Back that thing up on whoever, but that's up to you. Hey, Big Keith, do okay. you have any final words? Well, I, I do want to say this. Remember this. It's free to be kind to one another. And always, always smarten up, and I'm out.